The yeah. RSPCA said, we understand the crucial nature of walking your dog, however, please bear in mind that walking in high temperatures can cause serious and irreversible damage and in some cases death. I know, it's incredible to think that a uh, walk with your dog can be life-threatening yeah. for your canine companion, particularly as that dog uh, in that story was only walked at 21 degrees in the morning. Yeah, that's really surprising. Really surprising. Um, dogs like my little scully here are uh, fluff balls and although they're great in the winter because that's a nice fluffy coat, they're actually overheat quite quickly in the summer um, and so taking them for a walk in the middle of the day at all during these temperatures is just not a good idea it's kind of like you know British people I think generally you know you feel the heat more because you're not used to it whereas where I'm from like we have 25 degrees in winter so yeah. um, the dogs are the same they aren't acclimatized to these sorts of temperatures and they overheat really quickly so what do you do if you find yourself out for a walk and your uh, pet starts displaying signs of heat stroke what's the best thing to do mm, well the first thing that you'd probably note is that they have very fast rapid breathing you might notice that their mucous membranes the gums basically look a little bit more muddy coloured, maybe a bit purple or blue rather than a healthy pink colour. Mm -hmm. They might have seizures, they might collapse. If any of those things happen, then of course, immediately get them into shade. Yeah. And you want to try and cool them down. So it might be that there's a water course in the park, you might just have a water bottle that you can douse them in. If you're at home, then you might cover them in sort of wet towels and put a fan on them to cool them down. But you definitely want to go and see your vet because there can be some fairly um, significant life-threatening injuries as a result of heat stroke. And definitely walk them when the heat of the exactly. day is gone. Exactly. Dawn and dust, that's what you need to do. All right, let's talk about um, something else, uh, but drowning. Yes. Because so, I mean, dogs like to swim, don't they? Doggy paddle, they, do. they do like that, but drowning is... It yes. Can well, certainly if you've just um, taken my advice and you've got your heat stroke dog in the water yeah. and then things go wrong, then you need to know what to do with drowning. So I'm just going to pop Scully down. How so often got... does a dog drown? You know what? It's actually surprisingly common, um, particularly I'm right near the Thames in Richmond and there's currents and, and so the they get yeah. caught and, and dragged out. So it can happen. Also, my first job, I remember one of the vets had to rescue their dog and perform CPR on the beach in Is front of a right? crowd. Luckily, that dog survived. They, she threw a stick, it swallowed the stick, drowned, and then she had to go out and perform oh CPR. Oh, my God, it so does happen. It does happen. So what do you do then? So um, this is our little soft toy dog, uh, which I'm going to now perform CPR on. Now, if we have them on their side, you have them on the right-hand side, a little quick anatomy lesson. The heart in a dog is slightly to the left, as it is with us, and it's at the point of the elbow. So there, it doesn't matter the size of your dog, that's where it's going to be. But on the, obviously on the belly. That's, so okay, on the on chest, the chest yeah, just, just there. Other, okay. That's right. Um, and then when you're looking at the dog, first of all, uh, when you're thinking about resuscitating an animal, if it's drowned, it's going to have a lung full of water. So what do you do? You actually just lift it up. You empty it out, like if it's a jug Not of water. Not easy for a big dog. It, exactly right. But you want to try and at least elevate the back end so that it's going to pour out because yeah. you're not going to be able to fill the lungs with air when they're full of water. OK. Then have them on the side. So first of all, we're going to look uh, at the airway. So classic first aid, A, B, C. Yeah. Airway, breathing, circulation. So the airway, of course, you want to check the mouth. So you pull out the tongue, extend the neck. If there's anything in there, you want to get it out. Yeah. And then we want to see, are they actually breathing? Now, the two ways to do that is put your face beside to see if you feel any breath or otherwise you might pull out some grass put it beside the nostril and see a little flutter oh okay but also the chest is a fixed cavity so if you um, want to see them breathing look down and see the abdomen go up and down right. because you should only perform cpr if you are sure your dog is 100 you can do right. more harm than good you can actually do the opposite of what you're trying to achieve which is actually stop them from breathing and stop their heart from, oh, from right, beating okay. so you must That's make sure really you perform important. these checks first yeah okay. and finally circulation uh so of course you can feel the heart we know where that is at the point of the elbow if you can't feel it there the femoral artery is just in uh, the groin and you have a feel and see uh, if you can feel a pulse. If mm -hmm. you don't, then CPR is performed. I'm just going to spin our friend around. So you're basically going to, to interlock your fingers like that, and then the pressure is applied over the chest at the point of the uh, heart, about halfway the depressions need to be. What we're going to be doing is doing 30 compressions in 15 seconds, so about two a second. One, two, three, four, five, etc. And then two quick breaths. So. Oh, now, you do this, do the mouth to mouth. Absolutely. How do you now, cover the muzzle? So with, with your hand, you can make a small tube and then do it that way. You close the mouth, you blow through the nose. So you're blowing up the nose? You're blowing in the nose, yes, not in the mouth. So ah. close there and blow <sighs> through there. You'll see that it'll work because the abdomen will rise. Yeah. And you do a second one with the second apart. 
you repeat that cycle twice and then you go back to your checks to see, hopefully there's a heartbeat, hopefully the dog's breathing, happy days, da-da, healthy dog. The thing is, of course, you oh, can't... Oh, no. no. Sort of. Didn't work this time. Maybe needs to do a little quiet. bit more work. Because <laughs> um, the thing with, the, with that is that, is that you, you're not waiting, as you will be in the, with a human, for the ambulance to arrive. You know, That's it's, right. It's so down to you. At all points, you want to make sure you pick up your mobile phone, use your common sense, call the vet, have them on speaker mm. whilst you're performing this, because they're really the only ones that can help beyond what you're doing in the park or at home or wherever. Now, of all the things that you think could be dangerous for your dog, grass seed, I wouldn't think would be one of them. Yes, yeah, so look, uh, these are grass seeds. Now, that looks fairly innocuous. Oh, that's yeah, yeah. pretty. We're getting a lot of them in the summer because it's really dry at the moment. But if you just lift that little grass seed off the top there, Holly... It's like an arrow. Yes, exactly right. So what happens is, is that they get caught. Now, you can see how um, scully, that would be quite well camouflaged. And what happens with these little things is they get caught between the toes, they go in the ears, they get snorted up the nose, oh. uh, they go in the eyes, and I have know one that actually was swallowed by a little cocker spaniel, and it didn't stop until it had harpooned its heart. No. Oh my yeah, God. so they're incredibly dangerous little things. We get two or three animals come in every day to the practice at the moment with this, and the easiest way to prevent it is just after you've gone for a walk, examine your dog from head to toe, and you can just pull them out. And we pulled out three out of uh, Scully's foot just yesterday. Really? So something as simple Thank as that? Thank you, Really it easy. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I love the fact that Scully, your real full name is Skull Crusher. <laughs> I know. Yes, <laughs> my wife is watching children. this absolutely cringing right now because the kids outnumber us, and so they got to call the dog what they wanted. So a little white fluffy dog called Skull Crusher. Brilliant.